welcome back to Shana Training. Um, this week's episode is unfortunately going to be a heavy talking episode again. Um, this YouTube video and channel was dedicated to learning two things, lifestyle and activity guidelines. Um, today's lifestyle tip is going to be how to stay on top of cleaning. As you can tell, I love to clean. It's something that I bring up in almost every single one of my YouTube videos so far. So I'm actually gonna go into how I keep my sanity by having a clean space and the things that I use to help keep my surroundings clean. And then we're going to talk about mindfulness and mindfulness practices. Now, to speak on two subjects, one for lifestyle and one for activity, the mindfulness comes into activity because we are going to be relating you being mindful towards your activity goal per week, which if you remember from my previous YouTube video is 150 minutes per week in bouts of 10 minutes or more and an accumulation in seven days at a time. So we're gonna talk about that today and we're going to get started first with taking a look at some of the products that I use with cleaning and how I keep my sanity. So I'll drop a picture of what this stuff is right here. And then we'll see what happens from there. So now that you guys can kind of see the stuff that I use, I used to use your Mr. Cleans, your sponges, endless rolls of paper towel. I still have paper towel. I still use paper towel. I'm not a complete green thumb, um, but now I found a better product that works for me and saves me more time and it doesn't put as many harsh chemicals out and into the world. Actually, none of the chemicals are actually harsh and they're all biodegradable too. So, anywho, um, the products that I use are Norwex. If you've heard of Norwex and you hate it, stop. Don't listen to the rest of the video. You're not gonna wanna hear anything I have to say. If you're someone that's looking for something that will help you clean and be more efficient with your cleaning, this is probably where you need to be. So, um, when I clean, I always break down how I'm going to get to my end goal. My end goal is to have my kitchen clean. There's only a couple of dishes and all of that stuff, so I'm actually gonna walk you guys through the process as to how I clean. First step, have a plan. The last thing that I wanna get done today is to have a clean kitchen. I know it's pretty clean, but I can make it better. So, the second thing that you're gonna do, that I like to do, is to know that I need to do my dishes first. Because if I don't do my dishes first, I'm going to hate doing them last when the rest of the kitchen is done and I feel like I should be relaxing. So, when you guys go and wash your dishes, Norwex has two different options for you for your sponges. They have the sponge cleaner, which is, I think, the brisket something. So that is there for you. They are $9.99 each. This is a antibacterial sponge. So instead of it being your regular, regular yellow and green squeegee sponge from Dollarama that hangs on to all your bacteria, the Envirolock backlock that's in the um, Norwex cloth actually stops bacteria from multiplying. And actually, I've had this sponge for over two and a half months. Look at it. Do you see how dirty it looks? Yeah, I've cleaned this sponge three times in two months with a microfiber cleaning concoction. And basically, this sponge is as good as new every single time that I clean it. So this weekend is my weekend to clean all of my cloths, so I'm not there yet. Um, another thing that you could get is actually the pots and pan scrubber. It actually has a little blue tile on top, so you can actually scrub off of the um, food re remnants that uh, get stuck to the inside of your casserole dish, your meal prep dish, or whatever it is. Once you've done your dishes, I always like to say, put them out to dry. I don't like to stand there and dry my dishes. It feels like an extra thing that I have to waste my time on when the air could dry it overnight while I sleep. So that's just what I do. Once your dishes are done, then it comes to your countertops. Get all the shit off your countertop. If you got random pads of paper, you got random lighters, you got random egg cartons all over your place, it's gonna drive you crazy. So organize. Take the sticky mats that you've been trying to get rid of your stupid mats from and put them away. Take your egg cartons and put them by your front door so that you don't forget them. Make sure to take anything that doesn't belong on your counter off of your counter and get it out of the way. This way you don't have to look at clutter as you go through 
and clean your kitchen. When you're cleaning, being distracted by something being on your counter is the worst thing you want. Just get it taken care of, throw out the garbage. If you don't need that memo pad, peel off the top sticky, throw out the top sticky, and put the sticky back where it belongs. I have my to-go box on my counter, so that is where everything belongs on my counter, not actually on the counter surface itself. Once you've got all the shit off of your counter surface, then it becomes time to wipe it down. Now, I'm a huge fan of the kitchen cloth or the actual backlock cloth um, or the Enviro cloth. The Enviro cloth and the kitchen cloth are basically the same thing. The kitchen cloth is textured a little bit differently, so it's better to scrub off grease and stuff. Whereas the Enviro cloth is a little bit softer and it's good for all surfaces like your dining table, your side tables, your coffee tables, um, and a bunch of other stuff. But kitchen or Enviro cloth or paper towel or regular kitchen cloth totally works as well. Once your kitchen counters have been wiped off, the next thing that you gotta do is probably your microwave and your appliances. This is where I'll use my window cleaning cloth from Norwex. Basically, this is like a magic cleaning cloth. When you take paper towel and you put it on your window as it's wet, you leave all these water beads. The Norwex cloth, because of the backlock technology in there, actually holds on to extra water so that when you do your wipe, there's no water beads left behind. So you get a streak fee wipe with every single wipe that you pass with the Norwex window cleaner. So cleaning the inside of your microwave, making sure that it looks spotless as it does, is definitely something that I like to do. Cause then you don't have to waste an hour of your time once a month or once every six months or once a year <laughs> and scrub your microwave out. I know some of us don't clean the appliances. For example, when I moved into this place, the oven needed some tender loving care. So once you've done your microwave, quickly wipe out the oven, quickly wipe out the toaster if you have a toaster, and if you have a mini oven toaster, wipe that out too. Keep all your appliances in good condition and that way you don't have to reorganize and jig them continuously. Same thing with your fridge. Have your fridge organized. Number one thing that makes your life better, you know where stuff is in your fridge and you can go and get it. You know how many times I've gone to someone's house and they've been like, oh yeah, here, drink this, or here, eat this, and I'm like, uh, do you not see the Mount of Mobile on that shit? Like, fix it. <laughs> so go through your fridge. Uh, once you've done the appliances, the countertops, it basically comes down to the minor details, and that comes down to sweeping, dusting, vacuuming, doing whatever you want to do there. I know it sounds so weird for me to be talking about cleaning and how to do it, but it's something that a lot of people say I don't have the time for, I can't find the accountability within myself, and I would just rather pay someone to do it. If you're one of those people, stop the video, comment down below, I have someone for you that will come to your house and clean it for you and organize it and do all that stuff for you, so send me a message. If you're one of the people that are watching this video and you're like, yay, okay, now I have systems. Now I understand how I'm going to go about cleaning my kitchen. Then you'll take those systems and you'll bring them to the dining room and the front room and the bathroom. And you'll repeat them in the exact same manner so that as you clean your entire house or apartment, you're getting everything done from the top all the way to the bottom so that when you're done cleaning, you actually get to relax, unwind and rest. Now, the final piece of the cleaning is because most of the Norwex items are cloths or rags, you don't use it once and then dump it out, you actually clean them. So Norwex has a microfiber, <laughs> microfiber cleaning cloth. This microfiber cleaning cloth um, conjunction is basically just something to help remove deep down stains and help lift dirt and bacteria out of the back lock that's in the microfiber cloths. So because they're microfiber cloths, they need an active lifting agent and then they need a tumble rinse to get everything out of the cloths. So if you are interested in Norwex items, comment down below, send me a direct message and I will hook you up. If you don't think Norwex is for you, all good. I talk about it casually because I am not a salesman on anything other than myself. I can't sell this shit. If you're interested in cleaning, reach out to me. I'll give you my ID number. You can place the order. And if you like the items, then you know you're gonna help increase my revenue income. That's just how Norwex works. It is geared towards a multi-level media marketing type of company, but I believe in the products and the quality that they bring to my life. Now, 
The next thing that I wanted to talk about is mindfulness. Now, this is a really tricky topic um, for two reasons. The first reason is you're either internally aware and can have conversations with yourself, or option two, you're internally able to talk to yourself, but you're not aware. So the difference of that is, is I can have a full-blown conversation with myself and talk to myself and get different opinions from inside my mind. That's mindfulness. To become mindful, you have to be willing to sit alone and have a conversation with yourself. So if you ever get frustrated and you tell yourself, no, I don't want to talk about it. I don't need to deal with it. This is not how I operate. It doesn't matter. That is you being closed. So the first thing you have to do is open your mind and realize I'm frustrated. I'm kerfuffled. I don't understand what I need to say. And this is where you'll find the opportunity to seek out being mindful. So the best way to be mindful is to sit down in a quiet space. Sitting in a quiet space leads you to your own devices. Sitting in a room by yourself will allow you to digest your emotional feelings, your spiritual feelings, and possibly your physical feelings. Physical is the easiest one to get to. That's why I named it last. Spiritual feelings is second. It's definitely hard to get into um, and then emotional is probably somewhere in the middle. Everyone is different so I don't want to go out on them and say oh yeah physical is easy and spiritual is hard. No everyone's different so just understand that you have to be able to have a conversation with yourself about how you're feeling, good, bad, why, good, bad, how can I make it better and why. Then you want to be able to have a internal conflict so why did you need this time to sit by yourself? Did you need it so that you could talk about when you're gonna plan your workout? So you're gonna talk to yourself about when you're gonna hold yourself accountable to cleaning? Are you going to use the silence in your mind to solidify a plan of attack for your week? You need to make sure that you're taking the opportunity of silence and planning some intention with it to unlock the ability to be mindful. So, when you're trying to be mindful, first step is finding a quiet space. When you have that quiet space, having an intention as to what you're doing with that quiet space. Trying to figure out what you need to do, what you want to do, or what you're going to do. The third thing that you need to do when you're trying to become mindful is you need to be willing to... Um, accept that you might not get the response from yourself that you wanted. For example, just then, I wanted to say something that I shouldn't. So you know what? When you're talking to yourself, you need to be very, very <laughs> at the front of your head, um, thinking about how being silent, sitting with an intention, and planning that intention will benefit you. Trying to coach mindfulness is the hardest thing ever because it's usually something done through conversation. And trying to do it digitally as I am is going to be very hard because I'm not there to have the conversation with you to teach you how to become mindful. So, the ways that I do it, to quickly recap, find a quiet space, set an intention for the quiet space, and figure out why you needed to be there in that quiet space. That is how you become mindful. Letting your surroundings be quiet so that your mind can be loud. You might not even be able to have a conversation with yourself. You might just start crying. You might just start laughing. And if that is something that happens, you can take it as a good sign or as a bad sign, but that's probably an opportunity for you to reach out to someone else for some type of support. And whether that's going to be from a professional counselor, from a walking clinic in Edmonton, um, there's a really good one called Momentum. Um, if that's going to be for you going to your mom and your dad's to go and seek some counseling from them. If that's going to be you texting your three best friends in a group chat and saying, guys, I'm fucked up, help me, I'm stressing. Whatever it is, we do these things to be mindful. We just get that mindfulness from opinions from others. So being able to be mindful with yourself is where you will be able to level yourself up. So, cleaning, pretty straightforward. Start from the top of your list. Know what you want to get accomplished first 
and then do the biggest tasks to the smallest tasks so that they're done and out of the way. If you're interested in Norwex, comment down below, send me a direct message on Instagram, I'll send you my ID number and you can place an order underneath me with a kickback being sent to your boy. I'd appreciate it, but again, I'm not a salesman, so I'm not actively trying to sell this and it will not be published with the hope of it being a marketing piece of whatever you wanna call it. This is just me trying to teach you guys the skills and the routines and the things that I do to keep myself accountable, keep myself positive, and keep myself moving forward in a healthy, active lifestyle. The next thing is to make sure that when you're being mindful with yourself, you're being kind to yourself. It's very, very easy to get in a negative spiral, and if you are getting in that negative spiral, you should go see a counselor. A counselor has the necessary training, equipment, and professional awareness to be able to help you understand your internal emotions, your internal spiritual feelings, and how your physical body relates to that. So if you feel like you get stuck in that negative spiral, send me a message and I'll try and help you, or I'll tell you that you should be going to a counselor to seek professional help. With that being said, guys, I really hope that this video brought some value and some worth to you guys. If you found that it did, leave a comment, like down below, and subscribe, please, and thank you. Turn on those post notifications as well. And with that being said, I wish that you guys have a great freaking day. Catch you next time. Toodles.